hello everyone. This is uh, Stavros Yanuka welcoming uh, you from around the world uh, to this uh, edition of Wise Words, uh, which is being broadcast live uh, on Facebook and uh, and other plan uh, other platforms. Um, my guest uh, today, our guest is Dwayne is Isriev, uh, the co-founder and COO of Uptail. Dwayne, welcome to Wise Words. Hello. Dwayne, I usually ask uh, uh, our guests to introduce themselves and uh, and their work uh, to our uh, audience. Okay. So yeah, uh, nice to meet you and to, to be with you uh, today. So yes, I'm Dwayne, uh, the co-founder uh, of Uptail. So uh, Uptail, just uh, for a quick introduction, is a, um, a startup. Um, we, uh, we have built an immersive learning platform that allows uh, people to, to create, share, and analyze, analyze uh, immersive learning experiences. So we've been uh, uh, existing for more than uh, almost four, four years now, but, uh, but before we have had another type of, uh, of, of crew. And uh, yeah, so today we are a team of 20. We're based in, uh, in Paris. And uh, and we are, are keep uh, doing uh, immersive learning uh, experiences for uh, in all kind of fields such as more manufacturing, retail, or education. Well, that's great. Now, before we before we get into the substance of our uh, of our discussion, I'll ask you what I've been asking everyone. You know, given the uh, given the unusual circumstances that we all find ourselves in, how how are you doing? How's it been for you personally and 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 professionally? So yeah, so um, it's it's a very uh, special period right now. So um, uh, during this period, of course, we work all uh, remotely. So um, we were normally we are based in a, in a big incubator called Station F here in Paris. So it's of course an incubator of uh, around three thousand people. So of course it's closed and we couldn't access the the building anymore. And that's a, that's a good thing. So we. We need to we have need to to adapt uh, the new way of working uh, together. Of course, uh, as a, as any startup, we had already some um, digital tools tools that were in place, such as uh, we're using Teams. We are doing uh, conferences. We have this uh, this chat, and we, we we use it all the time. So on, on that uh, field, we were okay. But we are we need to yeah, we find to find some solutions to keep the contact with with the team. So we have implemented some daily meetings where someone of the team presents a, a feature or a, a topic he's working on to keep this, uh, this, the, the team together. And uh, yes, we were quite happy on how the things are going uh, inside the, the team. And, uh, and we hope, I don't know when, that we can soon uh, re see each other in a, for real. And uh, on the other side, more on the, the business side, it's also complicated. Uh, uh, as we told before, there are some projects that were put on hold because we, we need sometimes to, to get on the field to be able to shoot this 360 environment. And we are not, it's not uh, possible for us to, to access the field anymore. So we find some interesting solutions. But on the other side, there were some new clients coming in and asking us for uh, to, to build with them some inventive ways to to retrain, to reskill uh, people uh, facing the, the current restrictions we have due to COVID nineteen. Yeah, and as and as we were we were discussing earlier, you're in some respects an unusual uh, technology company because you do rely on having physical ac access to the space of your clients. Yes, so that yes. you can film their work environment and recreate it for mm. the augmented. Uh, reality solutions that you guys you guys offer. Do you want to maybe explain for those listeners who might not be familiar with uh, the terminology? What do we mean by augmented uh, reality and augmentation in general? So yeah, the, the augmentation is uh, is really something where the um, to the world uh, every can can become smarter and will have superpowers on demand to create, solve, and and, uh, and enrich your lives. So, for example, uh, today we can use smart devices to uh, augment our health, our strengths, or overcome disabilities, or just use headsets or smartphones to augment the world around us. But uh, yeah, but we're just at the beginning of this, and uh, and and we we are one part of the this augmented reality. We use immersive learning. So when you ask on how we we 
we were working with, uh, with immersive learning. So what we do is, in fact, we capture a real environment. That's why we need to be on the field, for example. So we use these 360 cameras. We shoot this environment, so the real life. And then we augment it with interactions that will allow the learner to be uh, really close to uh, like being on the field. So we will be able to make errors, to answer quizzes and all that. So it's, it's a, a kind of new way of, it's a new kind of e-learning that allows to transfer more than just uh, the knowledge, but also uh, uh, behavior, skills, and, uh, and, and to, well, it's a different way of learning. So yeah, normally we need to be on the field just in the beginning to be able to capture this, uh, this environment, but we, we have found some, uh, some interesting ways to, to adapt and to more promote, for example, off-the-shelf type of content we have created. So we shared uh, for free all our catalog to, to let people keep access uh, immersive learning content during this period. Yeah. yeah. G give us some examples, uh, Dwayne, if you, if you don't mind, about mm. interesting ways in which augmentation is used as a learning tool. Yes, for example, um, there, there is one more in, uh, for education that was quite popular during this period. Uh, we, um, we created for uh, uh, an ed tech who's called Le Livre Scolaire, who is um, changing, it's, um, it's uh, giving access to uh, school books, but in a different way. And we've created with them uh, uh, an immersive uh, experience where they can have access to a, a chemistry uh, ex experiment in a lab. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, this is mystery here, but today your um, students were not able to access schools at all. So it was a, a, a good way to, to, to give them access to be able to do this chemistry experiment with, without being on the field and keep uh, doing their, um, this, following the school uh, uh, program. Uh, so the, the, this, uh, this content was widely used and, and, and distributed during the period. This is an interesting case. And, um, and it allowed us to, yeah, to really experiment uh, mm -hmm. on uh, how students could have access to the, to the field without being there for physically. Yeah, and, and, uh, and of course, you, yeah, yeah. No, no, carry on. Yeah, so this one it was in in education, but of course we we also working a lot with um, with other more corporation type of uh, of uh, of clients. Uh, for example, for a um, uh, famous automotive company called PSA, we train mm -hmm. operators on production lines, for example. So that means they um, they can visualize their gesture they have to do on the production line before going effectively on the, on the on the production line, this allows us to reduce the, the training time. And so this is a mix, this is a little bit different as the first example, because this is really a mix between being on the field and uh, have access to the field uh, without being there, but accelerating the way you learn uh, things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, oftentimes I hear sort of um, augmented reality and being used sort of interchangeably or in conjunction with virtual reality. Again, can you, can you explain for our listeners, you know, what's the difference mm -hmm. and what your view is, mm -hmm. you know, about why augmented reality might be the, rather than virtual reality might be the way, the way of the future. Yes. So yeah, when we, we talked about before this, like and there's a global term that we used, it's uh, augmented learning. So it's a new way of, of learning. And, um, and, and in this augmented learning, there are two, uh, two parts, the virtual reality, what we sometimes call immersive learning, and the other one is augmented reality. So for example, the, to differentiate the two technologies, augmented learning is really uh, augmenting your current environment. So giving access to uh, live instructions, remote instructions to, to give you access and things you don't have uh, in, the, in the real environment. Yeah. On the other side, VR, so virtual reality, and uh, will, will teleport yourself uh, into an environment you are not for real. So this, yeah. using a VR headsets, so you can place yourself in this, in this different, um, in a different uh, environment. So that's the big difference, but both, uh, technologies um, are are here to to change the way uh, uh, to change the way we, we learn. In fact, do you, do you have a preference for one over the other, and and or or they're really quite complementary in some respects? 
Yes, they're, they're com complementary. For example, there is a funny thing that, uh, for example, for one client, we have trained the people in virtual reality on how to use augmented reality on the, on the field. So this is a, a quite an interesting example. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, no, yes, for example, if we, um, if we, uh, we, uh, we use the more the virtual reality because it's more on the, on the learning side. It um, it's, uh, it's allows us to, to train differently and to acquire uh, a different type of, of uh, knowledge. And as I said before, it go further than just knowledge. It also be behavior and skills. So by be able to be in a, in a secured environment, we're able to um, uh, make errors that uh, we could not do for real. We are able to, uh, to to learn at our own rhythm, for example. And also by creating this context, our brain will have a better um, uh, memory anchor because all this environment we, we recreate. So we are using more the, the VR because it's on the, on the learning side, but it could be uh, complemented by other technologies uh, such as uh, augmented reality uh, when you are on the field. Because it's, I think we just, the, the human can, there is an infinite number of augmented um, technologies that could be added to, to the to the human and it, some will, some will be to support some will be to learn and I think one day we will go probably to uh, to to change the way we we, we behave uh, by uh, by implementing augmented uh, things in our in our body. So yeah, do, do you want to say a bit more about that? Like, what what do you envision? Do you envision a, a sort of a a, a cyborg type uh, future? <laughs> For us, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the, yeah. When we start today, for example, um, already with the, with all the devices we have currently, such as internet, phone technologies, and so on, we're able to have access to a, a limited amount of uh, courses, tutorials, videos, MOOCs. But with augmented learning, I think uh, one day we we will implement something uh, in our brain and and merge with the artificial intelligence that will help us take decisions or. Uh, I mean, but I think that uh, Elon Musk is already working on that, so we'll see when this comes out. But I think there, yeah, there is a, 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 a gradient to way to, to go over there. Like today, we can change, for example, uh, what we do currently, and that's what we call like augmented support. Uh, we can change the way on how we learn, so what we know with augmented learning. And tomorrow, I think it will be augmented biology, and it, this will change uh, what, what we are. Wow. That is that is fascinating. Now, a lot of a lot of people listening to this will uh, will sort of potentially recoil and and resist, right? As this is this is quite um, quite invasive, and we already have concerns around around the invasiveness of of, of technology uh, into sort of our consciousness and our our being. Now, what what is what's been your experience in in how how people have reacted and and responded to the kinds of solutions that you're you're uh, uh, putting across. Yeah, it's um, yeah the, the the way we use these technologies um, yeah, when we deploy, for example, immersive learning into a company or a, an institutional organization, or it's it can be done in a in a different way. So when we think about immersive learning, for example, more the VR side. We directly think that we need to put some uh, VR headsets on our heads. It can be sometimes intrusive, or intrusive, or some people might think it's uh, we want to put it on their head. But for example, when we implement it, it can be used on a lot of different devices that are, uh, for example, we can access an immersive learning content on a, on a, on a regular uh, desktop computer, on your smartphone, on your iPad, and of course on any type of VR headset. So uh, people can, uh, depending on their their beliefs or on how they, they, they want to enter uh, in this technology, can access it uh, first on a desktop, then go a little bit more immersive, and then go slowly to, uh, to the full experience of, uh, of, of the VR headsets. So, um, so yeah, and, and, and we have really, when every time we, we deploy um, content, we do that, uh, a type of demo day at the end to see what the feelings are. And really, we have some great feedback even from people we, we don't expect, uh, older people, people who have been on the field for years. And when they, we take off the, the VR headsets, 
it's most of the time uh, just a wow on how close it is to to what they are doing uh, uh, on an everyday job yeah. so mm, so it just it's a, it's a flexible technology and we don't need to directly uh, go for a, a whole day uh, vr trainings uh, yeah yeah uh, it, it's been it's been said and i i've 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 heard this um a lot obviously in the, the last couple of weeks that you know the current uh, pandemic is accelerating the the adoption of you know of technological solutions mm -hmm. what's what's been your experience i mean i know you said before that you've seen you know you obviously had some new new projects coming in others have mm -hmm. have have uh, paused but what's been what's what is your broader view about what this situation is going to do in terms of of uh, technology adoption yeah we, we, I, th I don't um, I, I could not say that i know what's going to happen in the future but we have some if we start with two really concrete examples of uh, of uh, needs of people or of clients right now is that for example um uh, there is a, a need to reskill uh, a lot of people due to the current uh, restrictions so we had this demand, for example, from a, a famous cosmetic company who asked us to train more than 10,000 people uh, in a very short amount of time on how to, um, to be able to sell uh, to people uh, wearing a mask while you are wearing a mask with all the social distancing. So this is the type of demand we receive or also um, more from a manufacturing type of companies on how to restart a company uh keeping in mind all these uh, restrictions social distancing how to wash your hands so we have this really concrete demands on uh, on on how we could train people of the new uh, new world uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, opening to us so i think that more and more companies this is this is more the urgent side of the of what's yeah. going next but in the in the in the future strategy i hope that uh, and i think that companies and and also in education um the there is a shift that will uh, come uh, that we should integrate more this type of immersive or augmented uh, type of, of, of way of learning because uh, the, the world is changing fast and, 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 and it, it definitely solves some problematics of transportation, being on the field and training a lot of people uh, in, in, a, in a short amount of time. So I hope, yeah, and, and that's what we're seeing, but I think we're still in the, in the, in the emergency right now. Uh, it will change the, the way people have into, integrated. For example, I think a few years ago when e-learning came out, uh, some companies took more than 10 or 20 years to integrate this uh, e-learning type of, of learning. And I think due to what happened uh, recently, it will go a lot faster uh, yeah. uh, for the new, uh, the new technologies. And it can be, of course, like uh, uh, we have seen it like Zoom or any digital type of tool that, uh, that have a real, uh, that, that fulfill a, a need today uh, to, to teams to be able to work together and, and train people and onboard also uh, new people. For example, we have some recruitment com uh, companies who need to recruit and to give them a, a, an, an onboarding of the, on the factory or on the headquarters and they're using the immersive learning to, to be able to do that uh, remotely. Yeah, and, and what's, what's your, you know, because I, I think what, um, at least what I've observed is that the transition to, to online platforms has been has been fairly fairly impressive in terms of the speed at which, you know, a large part of the world moved. Um, I'm speaking about education now. Moved mm -hmm. moved into the online online space, and so the the exchange of information part of of education and the sort of i would say basic um interaction part has been pretty pretty well covered by technology i think what's what's missing um is the socialization part and and even i dare say the sensitization part and these are <clears throat> excuse me these are domains where you know i think augmented and virtual reality could and should play a bigger role, but we just haven't, you know, haven't seen the the adoption, or maybe the technology isn't quite there yet. I mean, what what's your what's your take on on that? 
Yeah, the, the technology is, um, I think the, te the technology is quite um, mature uh, by the way that, uh, the, for example, um, we use, uh, for example, the, the headsets such as the Oculus Quest, for example, is a, is a perfect device to, to have access to quality content, to, uh, to, to, make, to, to let it work fully remotely, not be able to connect it to anything. And now they have also implemented, for example, um, uh, device management so organization can stream and uh, and and distribute content very easily but uh, but i think um, yeah that the, the the technology is mature but it's more the on changing the habits of people for example uh, uh, it's quite complicated to to, for example, everybody has a smartphone. I think one people in two, on, in two on, in the world has a smartphone, but you don't necessarily think your smartphone as a as an immersive or an augmented uh, re mm -hmm. learning device. So, um, uh, for example, during this uh, period, I think people uh, use their phone to to to, to learn more, or to 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 check, as I said, like videos or or online courses online, and maybe the next step. And uh, I think some applications helped, like moving the usage of the smartphone as an augmented device. I think about uh, a Pokemon Go, for example. This mm -hmm. is the first application where people um, were aware that they could use the device as an augmented uh, device to 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 mix the the, the virtuality into their real reality. Yeah. And, and probably, and, and I hope so, that uh, that the, the, what's happening today could also make them think they to use their smartphone for a fully immersive, uh, a fully immersive uh, device. And using, I don't, I can, I can show you, but they're using, for example, I have this. Uh, you can plug, for example, this small type of uh, of uh, glasses on a on, on a smartphone. So maybe the and the, this technology is ready, but it's the in the in the in the habits that we, we need to to change and and it will move uh, forwards in terms of adoptions. So we'll see. Mm. We'll see. We had a what was it? it was it was a few years ago where um, I think it was Google was coming out with with glass, right? The the eyewear that was that was really good, quite advanced in terms of augmented reality but then it, it got pulled because because of privacy concerns because of of in a sense a social reaction i mean what again what's your what's your take on on those uh kinds of, of concerns and and obstacles to to adoption uh, yeah. when we when we launched the uptail it's funny because in the beginning it was something like uh, uh, uptail is immersive learning and story living so we really thought that um, that uh, other um, fields uh, other than just learning will take off uh, for example telling stories and more um, doing marketing and whatever but we've really seen that it's absolutely not the case the general public is quite of afraid or they didn't get into vr as we thought uh, but on the other side, they, they, there, is, there are some fields, and uh, especially the learning, the, the immersive learning or augmented learning that really took off, but in a different way that we uh, could imagine before. Uh, so we, we thought that maybe everybody would use their personal device to, to access um, content. And this is, what not the, this is really not the case. For example, today we have the institutions or the corporations who buy some specific uh, devices that are used only for for learning. So VR, when we when we we are in contact with our the, the users of Uptail, they really associate it to a, a, a specific device that is used in a specific way. But not, uh, I'm sure they're not using VR at home or in any other. Mm -hmm. field. So it's um, it has evolved in a in a maybe in a, in a different type of uh, we, use, we use VR for this. But that doesn't mean we use it for other games or things. So it's um, so yeah, and it and uh, yeah, the, the the devices really helped to to yeah to to help this uh, this scaling in fact. Yeah, and and tell me, are you are you uh, capturing data and 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 other forms of evidence to you know that that suggest. Uh, or the point to the effectiveness, if you will, of um, augmentation in in supporting learning. 
Yeah. And again, if you, if you give us some examples, that would be that would be great. Mm. Yes, to of course to 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 deploy uh, uh, an efficient immersive learning type of content, we, you must be able to evaluate your your learners or to ev evaluate yourself. That's why uh, on our platform, our VR learning platform, uh, we are offering access to uh, specific uh, learning data dashboards. Um, on the classic data, for example, copulation, scores, or ranking of your own, but you have also specific data that is linked more to the VR side, as we have, for example, um, heat maps, or uh, or uh, you can follow the you can study the, the path you have followed in your immersive learning experience. So this is the type of data uh, that can be compared to the data uh, that any type of learning management management system has. So we manage it the same way. It, it's mm -hmm. uh, confidential, can be per user. It's uh, it's contained into uh, uh, into a, a company and uh, it's fully uh, private to to the owner of the of the of the company. And we work also, for example, with German companies who have specific re restrictions. And and Microsoft, we we were based on, uh, on Microsoft uh, Azure, is really helping us to keep this um, high standards of of security. Uh, we might not be able to have if we we were just a lone startup so so yeah you have we have specific restrictions the same as any type of learning system and then we have some specific ones that are linked more to the vr side for example if you have content on a vr headset uh, and if it's hosted on there we 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 have created some some security rules that uh, if you still the, the headset from the school, for example, you will not be able to have to access the content if you're not logged in. But this is some specific things linked to really the the hardware of the of the thing. So yeah, it's both um, classic learning data that we keep uh, to to the companies and to the to the organization like schools, and then something linked to the to the to the hardware and how it is um, hosted on the on the. On the yeah. And then, so what <clears throat> have you done? Any sort of comparisons to see, okay, to to do, you know, a, a particular course or uh, or lesson used using augmented reality versus versus not, and then comparing the two to see which one is produces the better better learning outcomes. Yes, uh, every time we um, we uh, we create a, a, an immersive learning content, a training. We, all, uh, we systematically apply some KPI uh, with the clients. So sometimes it can be uh, more KPIs linked to, to business, how much time we could save doing a training, how much, uh, how, how, uh, how for example, uh, what's the retention. But there, there, there were some really um, interesting studies. So there, there was this research paper from uh, Adam Wilson from the Sutherland University in the UK, who really compared some specific uh, uh, trainings using um, virtual reality versus traditional learning methods or via virtual reality compared to video-based learning. And, uh, and it was on some topics such as uh, wood frame construction or uh, vaporization or condensation. So really like um, uh, topics that, that could need some environment to be explained. Yeah. And I know they had some uh, higher scores of more than 20% even just after the... Um, the, the training and even some months after the training, the, the scores were close to 20% higher than uh, than regular. Okay. So uh, yeah, and we, we 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 keep experimenting this data, and this, this this took some time also to to be able to 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 have this really uh, specific data linked to VR. And for example, one of our uh, main uh, things we were able to do with one of our clients is that uh, the same client I talked about earlier, like PSA, this automotive company, normally when they um, they need to learn a gesture on the production line, for example, they need five days, uh, full five days to be um, uh, an observation on this production line to know how to do the gesture. And thanks mm -hmm. to uh, immersive learning, we were able to reduce this period by one and a half days, so 50% uh, uh, shorter. Uh, mm -hmm. and just by the way, they can pre-visualize the gesture, seeing on the, their own rhythm, focusing on just security, focusing just on the, on the gesture. So we have this, this really yeah. of, of time on mm -hmm. learning something. Yeah, I mean, intuitively it makes sense because, you know, what... Uh, AR and VR can do is is essentially dramatically increase the scope for learning by doing, mm -hmm. 
right? And so it engages, you know, many more senses than, you know, either simple observation or just listening to someone describe something to you. Mm. Um, how, how are you seeing the application of this technology in schools? You mentioned a couple of examples, the chemistry lab example. Are you seeing it, you know, are you seeing people thinking about it more broadly? Mm -hmm. For example, I, I, I'm, a, I'm very passionate about history. Mm -hmm. And I think it would, be, it would be cool to use augmented reality or even VR to, to teach history. Yeah, history could definitely be, be very interesting to use. Um, in, my, uh, in my knowledge, we didn't, uh, maybe I'm not aware of it, but we didn't do anything in history, but we did something more in, in biology or in uh, or, uh, allowing students, they, they created by their own, so the whole class made their own uh, immersive experience. Uh, in biology, for example, on how uh, to protect nature in uh, under the oceans, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how to to, for example, uh, go on the field on a, an oyster field or something like that. So they really created um, and sh and they shared uh, the the field with the with the other students, and it was really concrete for them to see uh, what are the effects, what are the the the, 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 the things uh, that, uh, that that schools only teach by uh, by books so uh, th this is an interesting field um, definitely we, we could do, we could uh, explore it more deeply i think that uh, history but as i said we it's more what we allow in fact by um, by uh, by our technology is is that um, we generally as i said capture uh, the real environment which is easy because mm -hmm. you don't need to modelize a whole 3d yeah. environment so generally just uh, for example we augment the teacher by uh, allowing him to share his, um, for example, his gesture, his behavior, by easily shoot it with a 360 camera or, or his phone, and then to share it with the lowest possible effort and loss. Uh, but if we use 3D, for example, we give, we're going to go a lot uh, further and uh, immerse students into environments that are recreated, but mm -hmm. this is a little bit more complex for the the, the creator to 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 to, to Model, yeah. put together yeah 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 now there's this is i mean this is a a fascinating conversation and and you know this this i think there's there's a lot of promise uh in this technology what what are what are some of the obstacles and challenges you see ahead in terms of of more widespread use and, and adoption mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think uh, the, the obstacles we see, and we talked a little bit before about it's it's the the devices. It's still uh, it could be a problem. Even if I have some two interesting cases I can share with you. For example, like um, you're working with some uh, schools and universities in in Singapore and in Asia, where they are really um, good equipped with VR headsets. So it's already a regular thing to to allow uh, students to. To, to access, for example, um, content. So there are a lot of companies who are already creating content for history or any type in, in, in 3D. Yeah. And so students are using it uh, at a regular base. And it's absolutely not the case in, in Europe or, uh, or somewhere else, but they're quite advanced. So this is a, a challenge for the other countries, but we can see that there is some uh, bright future for, for the technology. And then on the other side, I have also the, the example of um, of, a, of, a, of a, a training we did for uh, Danone uh, in Africa, in Congo. And this was a, a training for, uh, for salespeople to be able to do a, a good uh, field visit of a, of a store. And uh, when I went there to, to create and to deploy the, the content, it was at the beginning, I was very really surprised because they, they, it was very easy to deploy because they all had a, a smartphone, they had a great network. So we, we even had a better ad adoption on the on the on the training than we could have some sometimes over here. So mm -hmm. there are some good surprises, and I think that um, all countries are could embrace this te this technology differently. But uh, but yes, today um, there is also even here and 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 I talked a little bit before there is really um, a challenge uh, concerning deployment uh, at scale. Tomorrow, if you want to train uh, uh, more than thousand people with VR headsets. It's it's still a challenge, and we've we've been working on that a lot for the past two years. And 
also the the, the headset uh, companies uh, have been working on, on that too because it's it's not an easy thing it's really it's like uh, and we, we try um, our own and, and the companies to make it as easy to to give a phone to your employees for example so I, I don't know if one day uh, everybody will have a, a VR headset at home to be able to access some trainings or will it be still a, a shared device and this seems quite complicated today with the current restrictions but uh, I don't know but the, the, the a lot of effort is going in this way to to scale this uh, virtual uh, possibility I, I don't know I don't know whether this is this is this is correct or not but one one possibility is that, you know, in, in the early days of digital technologies, uh, and even before that, and even in the early days of computing, I would, I could argue, you know, a lot of, a lot of companies and a lot of people got, got financially burned, you know, investing in, uh, in very expensive equipment at the time that very quickly became obsolete mm -hmm. and you know the sort of constant need to reinvest in order to upgrade um you know i think might might have put people off so maybe they're waiting for the technology in some respects to kind of stabilize or or i guess for the cost of upgrade to mm -hmm. drop you know uh to a point where it's where it's kind of manageable is that is that the case perhaps with VR or or am I am I wrong? And the technology is actually quite mature, but there are these other kind of factors getting in the way of adoption. Mm. Of course, there is always when we we talk to public organizations or private companies, there is always a question of budget. So we all uh, at the daily time we are facing this type of questions, and 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 we feel that in some times it could really. Um, stop the de deployment when they are asking about the cost of a, of a headset. But so, um, um, right, there are some solutions that that we have tried to to, to build that will help this deployment to to make it as less as expensive possible. We have, for example, today we have a lot of clients that have really z uh, zero budget for hardware. Uh, they're using their, as I said, their regular desktop computers. To, mm -hmm. to view the, the training in a, via a, sim, a simple link in the browser. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not that immersive, but it's, it's putting them in the right way for, for, mm -hmm. uh, for later. So we have a lot of clients who have zero budgets. Then we have them, they can have a, a five euro budget, so such with, the, with this or with the, any of your headsets. And then, of course, now with the, with the, the headsets, like the, the, even the, the good quality headset, they're around 500 um, euros or dollars uh, and and what we did for example for factories or uh, or schools is to create like a, a classroom kit so mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, a certain amount of headsets it could be five it's five to ten they are secured in a in a type of easy to use furniture with a tablet that can uh, manage a different device it's secured uh, and this had a quite low budget because it could be could be shared yeah among the students so we, this is yeah it's a daily challenge we have uh, the, with the, the clients to to have a budget and to make them invest in the, in the, in the technology but i think well, for example with the the vr headsets we are that are, that are coming out right now so around 500 euros we are the as a mature type of hardware i think they will last for at least two three four years uh, yeah. like we did we like we do with the smartphone right now if you buy a smartphone right now any type even the the the, the cheapest one, you're having a, a, a phone that will last uh, for at least five years and will play everything on the browser or whatever. So yeah. I think that the headset are, are out right now, they, they have the same, uh, yeah, the same type of mature uh, hardware. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne, tell us what's, what's next for, for Uptail? What, uh, how, how do you see um, the company coming out of um, out of this uh, this this emergency that we're in. Yeah. So yeah, we talked a lot about the, about the delivery, and this is one of the the, the, the challenge we keep working on uh, to be able to scale immersive learning into schools and and private uh, companies. Uh, so the, the the big things we're working is really facilitating this type of uh, of, uh, of sharing. Uh, for example, we have launched some features that are um, such as a short code. It's a short code, only a few numbers or letters, 
that will allow you to share an immersive learning experience uh, directly in the right account without having to download or log in into account. So it's really facilitating the, the, the distribution of the content. So we're working a lot on that. We have a, uh, we've created a lot of applications. But in a, in a bigger in a landscape, um, we are working a lot on, uh, on 3D handling. So allowing to add 3D objects and to be able to manipulate things like in real life, to take something, to put it somewhere else. And always in, the, in our vision is to make to keep it simple and not to, to go to this 3D uh, complex environment, but to really yeah, add an environment, a 3D object, move it, place it so to be close to, to the real uh, life, life. And then on the other side, the, the voice recognition. We, created an, uh, we launched it one year ago, and it's working really well, uh, such as in uh, as I said, for, for salespeople to train their sales pitch, but also to learn new languages in schools, to be able to, to train for uh, how to do a public speaking, for example. And there is a lot to do, uh, and it's not uh, only us, but also our partnerships as Microsoft or other, I think that are, there's a lot of improvement that is keep going and that we try to integrate to this immersive learning experience to, to reproduce a, a natural way of, of learning by talking, by giving uh, natural answers. So that's how the big, uh, the big fields we, we are in investing to in R and D to, to to coming out uh, later on, and then on a more different way on on the business side, we try to keep uh, expand organically in the U.S. and in the, in Germany. Uh, uh, are interesting markets for us to to be able to to deploy. Well, um, Dwayne, this has been a, a, a fascinating conversation, and uh, you know I, I thank you for your time and thank and, you. Uh, obviously, we wish you. We wish you the very best. You know, Up, Uptail is is one of the wise um, accelerator uh, yes. companies, and we're uh, extremely extremely proud of what you guys are doing. And uh, and again, we'll be we'll be watching uh, your progress uh, very carefully, and hope uh, to 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 see how how this uh, incredibly intriguing world is is going to going to play out yeah. so again Dwayne, thank you thank you for wise words uh, and we're also very proud to be part of, be part of, part of a wise uh, it's a, it's a great uh, accelerating thank you thank you have a all, great day bye all,